Pat, isn't he? Now, I really hope he doesn't just spend most of his time resting, which wouldn't be the unusual thing to do, especially after a hard day of moving around, searching for, not hard day, a hard night of searching for something to eat. It only makes sense that you have a sleep to, to rest again. But he's very curious. He keeps looking around. Now, Paul, you're wondering if I know most of the leopards in the area, and my answer to that is actually no. I only know a small percentage of the leopards. I think I did a, a search, not a search, a tally of how many leopards I've seen. I can't rem remember which book it was in. I think it was something like 20-odd leopards that I've seen in the Sabi Sand, but I, I don't know any of the leopards in the western corner. There's still plenty of leopards up in the north that I've never had the pleasure of meeting. Again, in the the eastern section or the southeastern section towards Singita Londolosi, I also don't know all those leopards there. So um, we can go through it at some point again. I shall I'll get one of my notebooks out, and hopefully I have a pen somewhere around here and we'll try and have a look now just remember with sightings like this obviously we haven't seen a leopard for for quite some time and because it's the first leopard sighting of the day there's going to be a whole lot of people trying to get in here so i'm going to try and sit with this cat for as long as we can and, and spend a bit of time with him the other guys can just hang tight because and that's the thing out here in the bush is that this is not just the only leopard that's in on the property at the moment i'll tell you right now if you carry on searching you with all the cars around you if everybody spent at least an hour trying to track an animal you would most certainly find more than one leopard that's what we always used to say everyone likes to just race to an established sighting so we will hold our spot <laughs> Now, so Nacho, you're wondering why do leopards have such thick chins? Mm, I've never noticed that, uh, that they've had a thick chin. You may be talking around, I actually don't understand the question, around their necks perhaps, how thick their necks are. Because they, they, their chins or their jaw just looks normal. I mean, they, they obviously that houses lots of very powerful teeth. So the other thing that I can think of is if you may be talking about their necks is that they have dewlaps, but this leopard doesn't really have a dewlap yet. He's still quite young, but he'll probably get one. He's not a, he's not a little leopard. I think he'll grow uh, in the next few years to be a, a stunning boy. And, and that normally is to have a dewlap. What? Sorry, I'm just listening. No, it was people talking. I thought for a second I may have heard a lion calling in the distance, but somebody with a very deep voice. So the dewlap is very important to help protect the throat just like a lion's mane is there to protect the vital organs from when they fight the same thing goes for a dewlap obviously leopards don't have manes now i'm hoping that that big yawn that he just did means he's going to get up and start moving around there's also a pearl spotted owlet calling And a Rexon mimicking it. <laughs> oh, I'm so tired. It's Sunday. Do I really have to get out of bed? I reckon that's what he's saying. He's now gone, oh, the people have arrived. I better put on a show for him. Lots of birds around here. Doves all making noises. The, obviously the pearl spotted owlet. Look how excited he is. He doesn't know where to listen. Chilean, you say that you love leopards. It's, it's hard not to love leopard. Of course, they're one of the most majestic creatures out here, just with their striking colours. And when they get on the move, they are even more amazing. And I think the fact that they are able to climb trees really well, and that's one of their favourite spots to perch themselves in, is the tree is going to look like he was going to do another yawn there, but he seems to have swallowed that one. He did the yawn that all guides are trained uh, to do when you're guiding. You sort of sit there, and it's 2 o'clock in the morning, and you're still trying to host your guests, but you know that you've got to get up in three hours' time, sometimes in summer, even only two hours' time. But you can't be rude and yawn in front of guests, so you sort of you close your mouth, your eyes do this weird, weird thing where they're like they're rolling back. That's exactly the yawn that Hosanna did. Now, don't worry, young man, we don't mind. You can show us if you are tired. See, his ears are moving around, though. He's listening. I can't actually see if he's if he's had a meal recently. He hasn't really exposed much of his body, but perhaps after this yawn he will. But his teeth look in fantastic condition, don't they? White, nice, because that's a, again another way you can age a leopard or any of the big cats typically when they get a bit of staining, that yellow and all that sort of um, that sort of grit build up. 
and that will uh, and that of course indicates that they're slightly older but white teeth like that I mean he's quite young he is such a beautiful leopard to me he is a splitting image of Tangana or a young Tangana He doesn't seem to be too interested in the birds anymore. Remember those days when anything dare flutter nearby and him and his sister would go chasing after it. Now, right, one of the things we've been chatting about actually for an, almost an entire year since I started working here is mange. And it's a big problem, unfortunately, with a lot of the animals out here. We see it quite uh, heavily affecting Lions. There's also that jackal around Chitwa airstrip that seems to have a severe problem with mange. And Mary, you're wondering if leopards have the same issue. Of course, mange is not limited to one species of animal. Any animal can contract mange. And basically, um, you won't see mange on a healthy animal. What happens is as soon as the, uh, the immune system is slightly weakened, mange jumps on board. And it, what it is, it's a parasite that feeds on hair follicles. So we saw a lot of mange during the drought. And you can imagine why. is because there's nothing for any of the animals to eat. So they were hungry. They were starving. They become weaker and weaker. And so, yeah, so that typically jumps board there. But I haven't seen any of the leopards with mange just yet. So this is so beautiful. I really hope that he does decide to, of course, uh, of course get up. He keeps staring over into the distance. So I wonder if he hasn't, uh, if he hasn't seen something. Maybe Shongile is in there. You know, Shongile loves to sit up in trees, and it wouldn't be the first time that we have seen her up in trees around Treehouse Dam. There's plenty of marulas here. There's also some nice jackalberries, just up in the drainage line, just slightly west of us. And they seem to be the only trees that have got decent foliage on them at the moment. And for these hot winter days, that would be a nice spot to shade yourself. Oh yes, now you're going to act like a real house cat. Look at this. <laughs> Isn't this sweet? Look at his paws. Now we can actually have a good look at his paws. I think Tumba's feet are bigger than Hosanna's feet, to be honest. He, they don't look so out of proportion. They actually look like they fit onto Hosanna, whereas Tumba, when you look at him, it looks like he's wearing shoes about 10 sizes too big. So I think he's going to be a very, very, very big leopard when he gets, when he gets older. But while Hosanna decides to lay on his back and stretch out like a typical house cat, let's go back across to Byron. He's still in the tent and he's loving the owls today. Isn't that great? So let's go see which other owls he's going to talk about.